Jeffrey and I have two really good friends, Phil and Willie Jones. In the church, 40 years, they exited and their children were completely manipulated by the cult to disconnect from them. They fought back. They have a magnificent billboard right in the Hollywood area where all the Scientology <laughs> activity. Here it is. Here's the billboard. Phil recently posted this on Facebook. The cult he's talking about. Contacted my sister's ex-husband in Canada to have him call me. He actually asked me if I had been PDH'd by a psychiatrist or dentist. The definition of PDH is pain, drugs, hypnosis. Scientologists believe that psychiatry uses pain, drugs, and hypnosis to implant people. The subject of this video tonight is going to be implants. People wonder, what, what is the technology of Scientology? You keep hearing about the tech, the technology. A huge part of the technology is about the reactive mind. There is stimu stimulus response mind. And these implants are stored in the reactive mind. Scientologists believe this very seriously. The biggest implant would be the OT3 implant, which lasted 36 days. But there are many, many implants that Hubbard has covered in the theology. The gorilla implants, the bear implants, the helotrobus implants, the macab implants. For example, the level of what's called R6EW is just running implants. Then the clearing course is running more implants. And OT2, the status of being operating Thetan 2, is more implants. And then OT3 is a 36 day implant. describe to the audience. An implant is something insidiously unknown to you put into your mind to have you act a certain way. Now let me ask you, is it put in electronically? It's done in various ways. It can be done, done just with hypnosis, hmm. right? It can be done with electric shock. So, so basically, uh, Howard said an implant could even be to a child who's being molested and been told very severely, hey, if you tell your parents, I'll kill them. And it goes into the mind with such fear and is installed as don't speak, don't say anything. So an implant could be, an, it's an overwhelming command that you then take so seriously that you then act a certain way. Mostly the implant is done unbeknownst to you. And so in Scientology, they, they seek to 
use a session and an e-meter and an auditor to get you to remember when you were implanted, how you were implanted? Yes, the, the idea is to erase the implants stored in your reactive mind. But, but first you have to find them. Yes. yes. And the Scientology technology is going to guide you on how to find them. Because Hubbard is the author of what he allegedly discovered as the implant commands. And there are hundreds and thousands of them. Just on and on and on. One of the more grotesque things about Scientology is their deduction and evaluation that when you act up, you must have been implanted. Well, give me an example of that. 30 years ago, I was under lockdown at Inbase. I threatened. I said, I'm going to take my car, I'm going to get out of here, I'm going to drive my car through the gates. Well, that didn't go over well. I was defying authority. My car keys were taken away. And then I had to have a series of confessional implant sex checks. Were you implanted by a psychiatrist to come into Scientology? Are you here dramatizing implanted commands to harm Scientology? So what they did to Phil for putting up a bulletin board putting up a bulletin board to see his children. And the Scientology mentally unhinged mindset is he's been implanted. A man who hasn't seen his kids in two years, asking to see his kids. A psychiatrist has implanted him. In a way, it's a kind of humiliation. It's kind of saying that you belong in a mental institution. Look, an implant is usually a command to harm and destroy. You're not implanted to be a good boy. You know this whole the assassination of Robert Kennedy. Sirhan Sirhan supposedly was in a trance when he shot those bullets. And there's been enormous papers and investigation in it that he had been, had installed commands in his head. This is an example of theoretically an implant acting out. I've seen Scientology could not believe that David Mayo, the senior CS, flag senior CS, Apollo senior CS, international left, in the Scientology culture, it's, he was PDH'd. <laughs> he didn't flee because of draconian punishment or abuse or living a life of hell. The buck is passed to the psychiatrist, put a command in his head. I've heard it said of other people too, oh, they're, they're a PDH. They're, they're a PDH character. So, so implants are used as a way to explain away people who leave. But one question: What, what when you like? I'm reading at the um, oh the bear implants here. I'm reading. Hubbard says, "quote From about 256 trillion trillion years ago to about 370 trillion trillion years ago, there are the bear goals." Unquote. Now. That's longer than the age of our universe. Hmm. So these implants, I guess, go way back on the whole track. But they can also be implanted this lifetime by psychiatrists or even dentists in Phil's case. <laughs> but, and this is something that I've always wanted to know. Who are these implanters and why are they spending trillions and trillions of years implanting people? To what end or purpose are they up to implanting? I've had a big issue with that. That's... A right on question. I had a big, big issue on these. What benefit would a bunch of psychiatrists or 
entities or whoever they were sitting out in the galaxies waiting to zap you. Um, there, there are two implants I gotta cover really fast. The Helotrobus implants were these dark clouds that came down. They looked like rain clouds. And these clouds came down from the sky. They were dark gray. And people thought, oh, there's gonna rain. And then zap, out of the cloud came a, <laughs> an implant. And it was a kind of like a, oh, I don't know, like a, it was a zapping that occurred. And people were fooled thinking these were rain clouds. And they were actually helotrobus zapping. And, and it's never really explained, well, how did they hide in the clouds and how did they have the electronics? But this is all taken very seriously. People swallow this. This is, this is scripture. There was one implant called the obscene dog implant. And Hubbard said, you were swallowed as a spirit by a dog, a very large dog, and he swallowed you and you traveled at the speed of light through his intestines and then he spat you out through his anus. And you got the implant while you were rotating through his intestines. That's called the obscene dog implant. Then there are these there are lots of aeroplane implants. As a, a Satan or a spirit, how are they implanted from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime? They, they don't go away when you die? Well, the, the culture believes that when you die, unless you're in very good shape, which only Scientology can put you in, you're going to report back to an implant station. Oh, you're implanted to get the next zapping of implants. And the reason you have amnesia and can't remember your last life is these implanters lurking in the galaxies, hiding in clouds and way stations, they're going to grab you when you die and zap you with amnesia and give you the next set of commands. That's sort of loose, loosey-goosey version of what Scientologists believe. I'm going to end off this video. I, I think I might do part two and expand this, but I'm going to end off this video with a hilarious tale. The implants of the clearing course and the implants of the status of OT2 used lights. Huge, flashing, blinding lights. And there would be a light, and then there would be a command to create, light, to destroy, light, to be good, light, to be evil, light. So, anyway, somebody got in touch with me who, want, who walked out of Scientology considering it was a scam. True story. This is what happened to him. He had given thousands and thousands of dollars. And they were checking out his clear status at FLAG. And I think it's $5,000, whatever it was. And in the first three minutes, he was asked some question. And he responded that he saw in his mind's eye a light. Mm -hmm. He just given them five thousand dollars, and they said, "Put the cans down," and they sent him to a test clear. Now, if you're not in Scientology and you're not trained in all of this, you may not understand the relevance of that. But I'll tell you, I'll interpret it for you. What happened is, at the beginning of what is called the clearing course implants, there's a light. So because he saw a light in his mind's eye, they thought he got the earliest moment of what they believe was the clearing course implant. And when you get the first moment of something, it can erase. Therefore, he was clear. None of that, he didn't buy, uh, he didn't buy any of that. They took $5,000, he mentioned he had a light, saw a light, and they sent him off to de declare a test clear. And he, 
thought, you know what, I'm getting out of here. So he wrote his success story. He knew the drill. And he wasn't going to act up or play up or call them a ripoff or anything. He wrote a nice story, blah, blah. And he just fled. And he called me and said, can you believe the scam? I saw a light in my mind's eye and I attested clear. They sent me to a test clear. So $5,000, three minutes, three he minutes. saw light, Eric. and he's clear. And he's one of the clears that, they, you know, they have these 45,000 people have attested clear. Well, that's a true story of a clear. He saw the light.